and welcome to MVP Hot Seat with Ibrahim Abou. We are pleased to welcome today Dr. Bjorn Peters, the Chief Financial Officer and co-founder of Dual Fluid Energy, a Canadian-German SMR developer who have recently inked an agreement with the Rwandan government to build a demonstration reactor in the country, which Dr. Peters will share more about it later. Welcome, Bjorn. Glad to have you with us today. Yeah, thank you, Ibrahim. It's nice to be here. Uh, glad to have you with us. Starting with the Rwandan project, can you elaborate further about it? What is your latest update on this demonstration initiative, initiative in Rwanda? Um, yes, sure. Um, so we uh, in September 2023, um, we managed to get um, a cooperation agreement with the Rwanda government signed um, that allows us to develop in Rwanda a reactor technology that is truly innovative and new. Um, our inventors have come up with an idea, an unprecedented idea of how to use nuclear fission um, in a way that um, optimizes nuclear fission to uh, close to the physical optimum. Um, and um, it, we, we can talk a little bit later about this. Uh, so the um, Rwandan side will provide uh, under this agreement um, a research facility um, or the, the grounds, and we will uh, be able to to do uh, some of the experiments that are necessary to get the reactor technology developed and licensed, very important, um, into, into operations and into a commercial product. And this resonates with um, the claim of Rwanda to be a proof of concept country, and that's exactly what we need. Indeed, indeed. And I believe it's uh, for sure in Africa is the first uh, the first time such an approach have been uh, done in the nuclear sector. Um, and yes. I think it's uh, very new even for the global uh, scale also. I'm not sure if there is any similar uh, initiative or approach that have been done uh, around the world. No, unfortunately not. So all nuclear reactor models have been developed in the 1940s and 50s uh, with, with very little uh, um, activity going on in the 1960s still with a molten salt reactor. But uh, so the, the world has essentially forgotten uh, and every country in the world um, how to um, how to bring a new reactor technology into practice. Um, and that's the challenge here. Um, that we need to build up um, lots of new thinking and new experience in an, um, a country that has no nuclear energy so far. But actually, the observations we made with, with countries um, such as Canada um, or European countries, where we uh, discussed this project, um, they have tons of experience with regulating light water reactors, which is a class of reactors, so, but that's uh, the, the most common used ones uh, globally. About 90% of all reactors are, are light water reactors. Um, and so it it is it might be even more timely um, to, um, and, and costly to develop such a reactor in a country with light water reactors, because all the regulators all optimized for um, doing a very good job with, with light water reactors, which is absolutely gorgeous, but it doesn't help us. Um, so for us, the move via Africa creates a lot of, lot of opportunities, of course, some challenges as well. Um, but we have found a truly competent and eager partner with, with the Rwandan Atomic Energy Board um, to uh, so, so that I think it will really be um, um, a booster for our technical development and, of course, a booster for uh, the Rwandan economy as well, if if this develops well. I totally agree. And perfect transition to my second question. What is the current status of your technology? So it um, has been patented um, a couple of years ago. We have um, s um, published uh, scientific articles until about the end of the last decade. And since then we're um, developing it more 
let's say more seriously um with we've, we've uh, the company uh, dual fluid energy inc in vancouver has been launched in uh, january 2021 um and since then we have established of course the, the company and the team and um and the first steps were now to um to do simulations of the technology or more precisely to develop simulation technologies for um, the, the, the reactor design. Um, and this has been a big important challenge. We are now going, we, or we have started with material tests, um, all components of a future license. So and the, the license will somehow include, uh, I'm not the specialist, I'm the chief financial officer, you didn't mention it, um, but I'm not a, a, an engineer. Um, the the license will um, invoke um, um, or will demand us um, from us to um, document very precisely what the material properties are. And again, so we need to set up measurement techniques and um, and uh, demonstrate that all involved materials can stand. Um, this particular stress um, um, for a few decades. And that is something that has to be done now in the next probably two years um, before we can start building anything. Um, and then thereafter, we want to, um, to build a test facility in Rwanda. Thereafter, the next step is to build the true prototype of a reactor. So which uh, the test facility will... Um, be built in the least size possible um, in order to save money, of course, uh, but we just need to demonstrate a few things. Um, and later on, the prototype power plant will um, have about 600 megawatt thermal energy and uh, produce approximately 300 megawatts of electric energy, or the 600 megawatt could be used um, for hydrogen production, and from hydrogen you can uh, get into a, um, a a new value chain of creating, for for example, ammonia. So, and if you have ammonia, you can produce fertilizers in essentially arbitrary quantities, um, and that is the um, would be a big progress for um, sub-Saharan Africa. Perfect, perfect. And my last question is: What make your SMR technology stand out from? the other 70 plus SMR designs and why should it be a good fit for Africa? Yeah, um, that's a, a very good question. And um, so our inventors, the what they came up with, they essentially started from a, from a blank paper and tried to optimize the use of nuclear fission um, up to its physical limit. Um, and, and so this is this creates energy efficiency, um, which is about ten times better in our uh, reactor system than with every, any anybody else uh, on the market. Um, and second, we follow a very strict design to cost um, approach, which means that the world needs a lot of energy, much bigger amounts than we produce nowadays, if we want to bring prosperity to to all 8 billion people on the on the in the world and so th this will happen only if there is a clean energy source that is easy to control um, and that is cheap so you can do lots of things with maybe with wind and, and solar energy in some regions in the world um, but together with all the, the the grids, the large grid transmissions and the um, the storage, uh, it's anyhow then quite it's becoming quite expensive, and we want to get down in the long run uh, the cost of power to about one cent per kilowatt hour, and in such a world, um, even less prosperous countries could afford. The usage of energy, as you as you know, energy is extremely correlated with wealth, with health, uh, with education, uh, with lots of social parameters. And this reactor that is cheap to handle 
uh, cheap to operate um, and easy to operate, um, in our view, is the best fit to, to the African market. And then there's a second thing. Um, so this is about the power market, which is, of course, a very important one. But we, we need fuels um, as well for, uh, for mobility, for the mobility sector. And um, this, our reactor operates at a thousand degrees Celsius. And there you can do lots of, lots of interesting chemistry to essentially build the molecules that are liquid, the energy molecules that we get out of fossil um, fuels and of, of maybe gas. Um, um, and so that, that we can put them into a tank uh, and reuse or continue to use the existing infrastructure. And that makes um, the dual fluid design so so attractive and so interesting. Uh, so it's it's versatile and it's scalable um, and it's going to be a really uh, cost effective. Uh, excellent, excellent. And I agree totally with you what you said about Africa. Africa is hungry for power. They need a power to grow, flourish and uh, grow their economies and social economic uh, needs. So uh, any source of energy that is clean should be on, in the table for them. And uh, both renewables and nuclear can go in pair and uh, be complementary to each other. As we all know, renewables are intermittent, while nuclear could help. And especially SMRs, as you mentioned, they are less complex for countries that doesn't have a lot of experience with nuclear. They are smaller, so to go with the grid, so with the African grids are smaller, so they are perfectly fit. So there, there are many, many benefits to uh, to SMRs in Africa, and I look forward to seeing more SMRs uh, in Africa. Thank you once again, Bjorn, for guiding us through this promising technology, wishing you continued success and endless innovation in this endeavor. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person at the Africa Nuclear Business Platform 2024 in Accra, Ghana, this May to continue the discussion as Dual Fluid is a bronze sponsor of the conference. For our YouTube viewers, feel free to leave your comments on the box below. Stay tuned for our next episode of MVP Hot Seats. And once again, thank you very much, Bjorn. Thanks, Ibrahim.